Let me put it to you this way. Aliens. Imagine a world with no aliens in it. Now, stop imagining, because that's pretty much the world we already live in. In the cosmos we inhabit, there are a lot of stars. Like, a lot, a lot. Like a buku giant crazy amount of stars with planets and time and materials and lots of other stuff. With the amount of other stars and planets out there, it is reasonable to assume that we would have a lot of other life forms from not our planet that we would have observed. Not so. So, where is everybody? According to something called the Kardashev scale, there are three different tier levels of civilization that should be out there in the cosmos. Technically six, but that's for later. The first tier deals with people that have sucked up all the energy on their planet. The second has vacuumed up all the star energy they'd be close to, and the third has nommed up all the food in the entire galaxy. Us Earth beings are close-ish to level one. Kinda like I'm close-ish to finishing this self-help book on how to finish things. This lack of other everybodies was first noticed by this guy named Enrico a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Fun fact, he is also known as the first creator of an artificial nuclear reactor. His last name was Fermi. Let's talk numbers for a second. Actually, I hate numbers. Let's just talk. If you take the number of stars that have formed over the years times the number of those stars that have planets times the number of those planets that can support life times the number of planets where intelligent life has arisen times the number of those lights that can communicate times the time it takes that communication to travel between planets, your solution will be equal to a metric buttload of life that should be right there on our doorstep. The sheer volume of these planets that should be there means that in theory there are literally thousands of level 3 civilizations out there. And still, crickets. Exactly the same sound as when I sent out my birthday invitations. So what the biz is going on here? I'm so glad you didn't come looking for concrete answers, because I have none. Let's take a look at some fun, theoretical solutions to pass the time. Theory 1. They're out of our league. Imagine a man in a shack in the woods. He believes he's the last man on Earth because he's been sending out Morse code signals for playdates for years with no response. Come to find out, he only lives a mile from Sacramento, California, but no one ever heard his message to hit the subscribe button because they were too busy with their WhatsApp chats. Maybe it's the same with the aliens? Theory 2. The Inevitable Apocalypse I don't know if you heard, but a few years back there was this thing called the Cold War, where we got pretty close to destroying the world as we know it. Fast forward to today and we are still one Peter Griffin away from a nuclear apocalypse hitting the reset button on humanity. Maybe this is actually pretty common in the cosmos, and everyone else already blew themselves up? Theory 3. When enough is enough. There comes a time when you are clashing and you reach a level of basedom that just doesn't need to evolve anymore, so you sit back and relax and start to just live your life. That's just an example for the alien analogy, obviously. The work of a clasher is never done. But what if that's what happened to our cosmic neighbors? Maybe the need to continue colonizing or expanding becomes a thing of the past as a species becomes interplanetary. Theory 4. Nothing is real. An interesting idea about the logical progression of beings and their need to live lives while also consuming life fuel is that the most efficient way to do it is to take the brain matter, the important bit, put it in a simulation, and let it live its best life forever, no strings attached. What if all the aliens are just planets full of brain pods colonizing their own simulated worlds, hitting the like button over and over to keep that dopamine high going for eternity? On a similar note, maybe humanity is just one giant simulation that is being run by extraterrestrial beings testing to see what happens if humans are alone in the galaxy. James, if you get all mad on me again and ask, what if that's just a simulation of a simulation, I swear to god! Theory 5 Influencers of the galaxy. Some people have theorized that Earth is the Truman in the Truman Show. Just some reality TV star on display for all the cosmos to see, blissfully unaware of its completely scripted life run by alien producers somewhere off in a distant galaxy. I know it's tempting, but you can't actually claim alien reality TV star as a tax write-off just yet. Theory 6. Flaming Death is a huge hit. We don't give a thought to the bugs that live around us. They do their thing, we do ours. There's not much we have in common, aside from maybe some meal choices. They're the NPCs of the real-life world. There is the possibility that aliens are to us what we are to bugs. 
It's not that they don't want to talk to us, or would want to hurt us if they knew we were around. We are just on a completely different level, and it wouldn't make sense to even try in the first place. Theory 7. A Quiet Place All of the other races and species in the galaxy know not to broadcast their whereabouts to avoid drawing the attention of the galactic predators. They all learned, somehow, unclear how they would have learned in the first place if they couldn't say anything, that noise leads to destruction and the descent of havoc bears. Oh, on that note, there is also a theory that there is just a super predator species out there, listening, waiting for the slightest mistake so they can pounce and make mincemeat of their next planet-wide victim. I don't want to make the Tiger Mom comparison, but I think a lot of Asian children probably have the best understanding of this example. Theory 8. The Illuminati. The all-powerful government is keeping all the things from us. They know, but they won't let us know. This theory is probably met with a very healthy level of skepticism, and for good reason. Theory 9. Space is super dead. I saved the best for last. If you are familiar with the Dead Space video game series, then you will know that the main big boss antagonists are the Brother Moons. These giant heaps of dead flesh travel the cosmos in search of living material that they can kill and turn into dead flesh to add to their ever-growing mass of species-killing moondoms. No, I'm not describing my shoe collection. So if there were species out there previously, they've been eaten. Maybe. In the midst of all these questions and confusions, and theoretical theories that may or may not involve your brain as the meat in a soup pot, the one thing that we know for a fact is that this video was fun to make. Hungry for more paradoxes? Definitely don't watch this video right here then, because it definitely won't satisfy that craving. Definitely.